going on welcome back to turner fishing i'm steven turner so in today's video we're going to be covering the strike zone i'm going to try to go a little bit in depth it won't be a long video you know the majority of these in-depth videos aren't very long but i just want to kind of explain everything so it can help you on the water so the strike zone so basically what i mean to explain the strike zone i'm gonna you know dumb this down and then i'm gonna explain why certain things happen when certain things happen so basically this is your school of crappy you found this school of crappy on your side scan your 2d your live scope whatever you're using you've got a school of crappy all right in this school right here we've got eight crappy give or take there's eight eight little little knots on this thing all right you throw your jig these crappy sitting in 10 foot of water you throw your jig past them you're letting it pendulum back to them so this crappy shoots up and eats this jig and you know when your jigs in about three foot of water shoots up out of the school and eats it what does this entitle basically what that means is this crappy in particular because all crappy have different personalities his strike zone was eight feet you're in 10 feet of water he ate it in two feet he was hungry so he went up and bit it all right so on this channel i teach you repeat the cast now this works 90 percent of the time but when you throw and this pendulum back you get back to two feet you don't get a bite it goes down you're at about six feet now this crappy shoots up and eats it you got another one that crappy's strike zone was four feet all right you repeat the cast boom you letting it go down pendulum to the boat you get right above these fish this crappy eats at eight foot that crappy strike zone was two feet you kind of get where, I, where i'm coming with this each individual crappy has a different strike zone a strike zone basically means the amount of distance that this fish is willing to eat that pretty much sums it up well let me let me, let me deep dive a little bit so we got this crap this crap right here it has an eight so we get it down on this brush pile and we go right above him he still doesn't eat but when we pop this he instantly eats it so what is his strike zone basically his strike zone is i'm not hungry i'm not gonna eat but when you popped your jig the core inside of me had a reaction and i ate anyway that's a reaction strike strike zone i don't have a better name for that that's that's you know reaction strikes i could probably make a whole video on that but and again we have live scope we're gonna drop this jig straight down this this one right here is our two pounder we drop this jig straight down we get right above him the fish is not moving he's just sitting there swimming we're following this fish we're popping it popping it popping it we're following it we see this fish flash on the screen we see the fish do this he noses it we start lifting our jig boom got him what is that i'm gonna give you another example and i'm gonna explain what that is you throw past the school way over here you get down to where the school is you wind it you grain and crawl this jig and when you go past these fish they start following you know one or two of them will break off and they'll start following it and they'll follow and follow and then they'll eat that strike zone is basically they want something moving now i know y'all are probably like dude that's just you know they want to eat it when they're moving that's what it's called but reality everything is a strike zone you were in that zone i mean if you 
all right, let me let me say it like this. If you're in a grocery store, let's say Walmart or Food Line, Bilo, whatever, you go to check out. Yeah, and you're probably like, what does this got to do with a strike zone? Let me explain. You go to check out, you push your buggy up there, you're unloading your groceries. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I got five kids. So, you know, three of them are grown, two of them's kind of small, whatever. But back when they were little, the big stores strategically put stuff where you check out. They'll put a little toy over there. They'll put a Slim Jim over there. Or in my case, they'll have a, a, a drink cooler with a, a green monster in it. And you're like, dang. You know, I really want one of those. Or your kids are like, Mama, Daddy, Mama, Daddy, can you buy me that toy? Now, where, what does that got to do with a strike zone? You basically was in that strike zone. You know, you've seen that monster just sitting there like, Ooh, I wonder what it, it tastes like. Boom, you got me. You hooked me. Hook, line, and sinker. Your kid sees that Super Mario toy over there, and you buy it for him. Boom, they got you. Riding the boat, no net, straight up boat flip your ass. So, basically, every fish has a different personality. And I know this is a weird way of explaining it, but I'm hoping this get, clicks in some of you guys' head of why I say to throw a 164 ounce or a 132 ounce jig. Because you don't know where the strike zone for any of these fish are off the top of your head. You know, with live scope, I know if I put it in their face, the majority of the time they're gonna eat it. But there is a lot of times when I throw it out there that this fish is just gonna swim up and eat it right off the bat. And that's an active fish. But, you know, when you have a big school, say, say instead of eight fish, this is 50 fish. There's a certain depth above these fish or over here or winding past it that you know 40 percent of the school is going to bite and that's where it plays a big factor in your everyday fishing if you're fishing a dock if you're fishing a brush pile or a bridge when you're repeating that cast and you're using a jig that's going to give you every depth for at least a couple seconds because if you use a 1 16th and this fish wants it at four foot you throw it past him you know, the jig's going to be down here and you're going to be coming straight through the school. You're never going to catch that fish that wants it four foot above them. That's why finesse fishing is so effective. And that's why using these smaller jigs, smaller jig heads, getting down there with smaller line, like four to six pound tests, and able to stay above these fish, that's what's going to get you more bites. And that's going to keep you in the strike zone. So I'm hoping on today's video, you weren't like, man, this dude's freaking crazy because that is a crazy explanation. But what I'm basically telling you is this crappy, this is a crappy now, not a jig, has a, a zone that he's willing to eat. And getting your jig into that zone, getting your minnow into that zone. I mean, there has been days that I've used minnows and if you drop it right on them, they won't eat it. But if you let that minnow swim up here, eventually he's going to come up there and eat it. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button for me. Uh, subscribe down below if you haven't. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers. And I'd love for you to let me teach you how to catch more crappy. Until next time. Yee! -yee.